This episode is aimed at addressing nutritional deficiencies and the most effective supplements as it relates to depressed mood states. These are relevant for severe depression, i.e. clinically diagnosed major depressive episodes, as well as the more common and mild pervasive depressive mood states, categorized by low mood and or anhedonia, both of which may be accompanied by difficulty focusing, lethargy, sleep disturbances, hopelessness, and so on. The nutritional deficiencies addressed in this segment will be that of micronutrients, so i.e. vitamins, macrominerals, trace minerals, and organic acids. Macronutrients in the form of fats, carbohydrates, protein, and overall calorie consumption will not be addressed here. Before I begin, a note to those listening, as with all of my episodes, the audio of this is also available to listen to on both Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Anyway, let's now get on with the list. First, vitamin B. So B vitamins, a group of eight water-soluble coenzymes, play crucial roles in metabolism and are found in many raw foods. Deficiencies can lead to various health issues, including depression. Depressive symptoms often accompany low levels of B vitamins, specifically B12, B6, and B9, i.e. folate, with research suggesting that higher intake of these vitamins may lower depression risk, although it's unclear if they prevent it. To note, it's a common occurrence for individuals to have a mutation in the gene responsible for converting folic acid into its biologically active form. So if wanting to supplement for this, it's safer to supplement with 5-MTHF, the active form of folic acid, which can be bought as a supplement. This will be the safest bet if looking to achieve clinical benefit. Next, homocysteine. A homocysteine is an amino acid which, when levels are high for extended periods of time, can cause considerable damage to the inner linings of our blood vessels, which may give rise to a range of cardiovascular conditions. Besides this, higher levels of homocysteine are linked to those with depression and are thought to be partially responsible for it, as well as the association with cognitive decline. Now, the reduction of these levels can be easily achieved by the supplementation of the aforementioned vitamin B6, B12, and vitamin B9. As mentioned earlier, the biologically active form of folate is the safer form of supplementation. The bioactive form of folate, as mentioned earlier, is the 5-MTHF. So next, S-adenosylmethionine, otherwise known as SAME. The reduction of SAME levels are often seen in those with depression. This is another critical amino acid which acts as a methyl donor and plays a crucial role in our metabolism and the synthesis of mood-enhancing neurotransmitters. Its deficiency may be in part due to the observation of the reduction of vitamin B12 and folate that is seen for those with depression. These vitamins are needed in the formation of same. Studies on the therapeutic effect of supplementing with same, dosages ranging from 800mg to 3200mg daily, have shown SAME to be effective in the treatment of depression, and that is safe to be used in combination with antidepressant treatment. More research is needed to further study its efficacy and safety, but the results are definitely promising to date. Next, Saffron. A recent meta-analysis assessed the impact of Saffron supplementation on symptoms of depression and anxiety across various populations, including adults, adolescents, and those with subclinical conditions. It built on findings from earlier studies confirming Saffron's significant positive effects on both depression and anxiety when compared to placebo. Specifically, Saffron showed considerable efficacy as both a standalone and adjunctive treatment in depressive disorders, with no significant differences when compared directly with antidepressants. Most studies administered Saffron supplementation at a dose of 30mg daily. However, the analysis also concluded that the studies to date had limitations, i.e. small sample sizes and short durations. So therefore, more well-controlled studies are still needed to better judge its long-term benefit and safety profile. Next, vitamin D. Although indiscriminate supplementation with vitamin D has not proven effective at relieving symptoms for those experiencing depression, low vitamin D levels are significantly associated with depressed mood. Therefore, the correction of these levels, if suboptimal, is generally advised for good health. Next, magnesium. So magnesium is crucial for over 300 cellular functions and the body's inflammatory defense mechanisms. A deficiency in magnesium can lead to overactivity of NMDA, which is associated with depressive symptoms and neuroendocrine alterations. Studies indicate that adults with depression often have lower serum magnesium levels. 11 studies have linked magnesium supplementation with a decrease in depressive symptoms, showing a statistically significant effect. It's reasonable to conclude from this that magnesium supplementation can be therapeutic, but to be more certain of its potential benefits, more control studies are warranted. Next, selenium. So this is a trace element which plays a critical role in mood regulation, though its exact mechanisms remain unclear. Selenium is understood to have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, immune modulatory, and neuroprotective effects. 
Studies generally do not support observation of deficiency in serum levels of selenium for those with depression. However, the few studies looking into the effects of supplementation of this element for those with depression have generally demonstrated a symptom reduction and enhancement in mood scores. Next, coenzyme Q10, a vitamin-like molecule that plays a crucial role as a potent antioxidant and in the formation of ATP in the mitochondria, which is the molecule that provides us with energy. Research to date demonstrates the link between low serum levels of this enzyme and states of depression. The studies on this are limited in number, often including participants who were experiencing depression as a consequence of physical health disorders or bipolar affective disorder. Nevertheless, supplementation in these cases has proven effective and therefore further studies investigating its potential in alleviating symptoms in those with unipolar depression is warranted. Next, curcumin, a substance which is extracted from the spiced turmeric, has been investigated for its potential use in multiple mood disorders, including depression. Studies to date generally show a modest improvement in symptoms for subjects taking curcumin when compared to placebo. The doses given from the studies I've read range from 200 mg to 1000 mg daily, and they were usually tested over a course of eight weeks. Next, zinc. Research into zinc was provoked by the observation of the strong connection between individuals with low zinc levels and depression. So far, zinc supplementation has shown to be effective in the treatment of depression, with the more convincing effects being when used in combination with antidepressants. Next, acetyl L-carnitine. Again, research into this was prompted by the role that a deficiency in levels of L-carnitine has in increasing the risk of developing depression. A major meta-analysis on this concluded supplementation of L-carnitine shows significant reduction in depressive symptoms when compared to placebo groups. Next, creatine. So one grams to five grams of creatine monohydrate daily. This is an amino acid which is often known for its use for those who resistance train, but there are some promising results from the literature so far pointing to its mood enhancing effects. This is thought to be due to its effects on the dopamine pathway. The majority of these studies included augmenting creatine with regular antidepressant medication. Next, inositol. Now, this is a sugar alcohol which is abundant in the brain. With comparatively large doses taken daily, its effects have been promising in the few trials that have been done. However, there aren't many of them and the results are mixed. Next, omega-3 fatty acids, specifically in the form of EPA. Now, DHA has not shown to be effective. The minimal dose recommended is relatively high at 1000 milligrams of EPA daily, which is still possible to acquire in capsule form. Its observed positive effects on mood are thought to be as a consequence of its anti-inflammatory properties. The systematic reviews performed on EPA have been critical of the quality of studies to date, but the general consensus is that there appears to be a modest benefit to taking EPA for those with depression. Next, lavender. A major meta-analysis performed in 2021 concluded that lavender was effective in reducing symptoms for those with depression. Lavender is often used in aromatherapy, making it hard to judge the effects lavender may have on its own, but some of the studies included its administration orally via capsules, and this is either of 1000 mg of lavender flower powder or 80 mg of lavender oil daily. The general consensus again is that lavender does indeed exert therapeutic effects, but the study designs to date are flawed. Next, N-acetylcysteine, otherwise known as NAC. Used commonly to reverse paracetamol overdoses, this particular compound is emerging as having modest improvement in depression alongside other mood disorders. Again, most likely due to its anti-inflammatory role. Next, Rhodiola rosea. A clinical trial assessing the efficacy and safety of the SHR5 extract from Rhodiola rosea in treating mild to moderate depression demonstrated significant improvements in depression, insomnia, and emotional instability for the treatment groups with no improvement in the placebo group and no serious side effects reported. This was conducted over six weeks. Participants were divided into three groups. Uh, group A received 340 milligrams daily of the SHR5 extract. Group B received 680 milligrams daily of this extract and group C received a placebo. This was just one trial. There have been a few more, but more evidence is needed to come to any confident conclusions. However, the results today are promising. To note, some emerging treatment options that I have not included are tryptophan, 5-HTP, St. John's wort, lion's mane, calcium, L-tyrosine, and L-theanine. These were excluded because either the evidence base is still limited, their potential side effects, or the benefits from taking these are relatively minor based on the literature that I've reviewed. That wraps up this exploration into the supplementation and nutritional deficiencies relevant to those prone to depressed mood states. Please note that although I am a clinical doctor myself, 
I strongly advise against the self-administration of these protocols and medications mentioned without first consulting with the relevant clinician. That being said, if you have any questions relating to the information covered, please feel free to reach out to myself. I'm always more than happy to help. And as always, thank you so much for listening.